Today we're going to talk about dependent and independent probability. First we're going to start off with independent probability, but before we do so, let's go ahead and review a couple basic things. We know that when we're talking about probability, the probability of an event happening is the favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes. Just a little abbreviation right here, we've got the probability equals the favorable, the ones that we want to happen or the ones that we're considering happening, over the total possible outcomes that could happen. So in this set we have seven blue marbles and we have three red marbles. In this case the probability of getting a red marble, which is our first event down here for this first problem, the probability of getting a red marble is 3 out of 10 because we have three favorable events for the red marble and a total of 10 total events that could happen for this first one. Then we go to our second event for this probability is the probability of getting a blue marble. Now the key thing whenever we're doing this that we need to remember, the key point, is that we always need to pick one of them and then we need to put it back. So whenever we are doing independent probability we pick something and then we put it back. So we actually picked one of the red ones right here and then we put it back. So we still have a total of 10 marbles, still have 3 reds, still have 7 blue. So now the probability of getting a blue one is 7 out of 10. And I check to see if I can reduce. I check up and down. Can't reduce any of those. Check diagonally. 3 and 10, 7 and 10, can't, can't happen. So I multiply across. Whenever I multiply fractions, I multiply across. Just a little fraction review. So I have 3 times 7, which is 21. And I have 10 times 10, which is 100. Problem number 2. The probability of getting a red is, again, 3 out of 10. 3 total red that I can get, my favorable outcomes, out of a 10 total outcomes. Total of 10. It doesn't change because we put the red marble back. So I still have 3 out of 10. Check up and down. Check diagonally. Can't reduce anything. Multiply across and I get 9 out of 100. 3 times 3 is 9. 10 times 10 is 100. Probability of getting a blue one first is going to be 7 total out of 10. 7 total favorable outcomes, that is. Out of the total 10 marbles altogether, multiplied by 7 out of 10 again, and you can guess what the answer is. It's going to be 49 out of 100. Let's go on to dependent probability. Now, I will go ahead and reveal the secret real quick. Dependent probability is one when we pick one and we don't put it back. Stress on the don't. We do not put it back. So I still have the same set, seven blue marbles and three red marbles. The probability I get a red marble is going to be three out of ten. Big surprise. But now instead, when we pick one of those, what happens is we have one less marble because we're not putting it back. So when I figure out the probability of a blue one, I now have seven out of nine marbles. Oh, look at this when I check to see if I can reduce it up and down, doesn't work, but I can reduce diagonally. 7 and 10 doesn't work, but 3 and 9 I can both reduce by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Multiply across. 7 over 30. Let's go on to the next one. But we now have our set of marbles back. Now we are picking red marbles and red marbles. First event that we pick is red, second event that we pick is red as well. First event that we pick red is going to be the favorable outcomes, it's going to be 3 out of 10. One of the marbles is taken away because we do not put it back with dependent probability. It is dependent on what we did the first time. Then we multiply by, how many red do we have left to pick from? 2 out of a total 9. We can cross reduce twice in this case. Same thing that we did in the, on the uh, above one. We divide both uh, the top and the bottom diagonally right here by 3. And we divide these two, because they're both even, by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 
1, 10 divided by 2 is 5. Can't reduce any more, multiply across, I get 1 over 15. See if you can get these last two problems done before I do. Problem of getting a blue, now let's go ahead and go back and erase those again. This time I'm picking a blue the first time. Probably I get a blue is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 out of 10. Then a red. Well, I multiply the outcome for that. I have 3 red out of a total 9 now. Now I can't reduce 7 out of 10, but I can reduce a fraction up and down 3 over 9. Divide them both by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 7 times 1 is 7. 10 times 3 is 30. Next, erase this again, and find the probability of a blue one and then a blue one. Well, the first thing, big surprise, 7 out of 10. I have 7 blue favorable outcomes up here. I have 10 total outcomes, just like all the other problems that we have started out with. And then I take one of them away, I don't put it back. How many blue ones do I have left to pick one for my second blue outcome right here? I have 6 out of a total of 9. Now what I can do is I can reduce, I can reduce up and down right here, divide them both by 3, and I get 2 on the top, 3 on the bottom, divide this one and this one diagonally by 2, because they're both even, and I am going to multiply across, and I get 7 over 15. And now we are all up to date on how to do independent and dependent probability.